Yes, yes, Canada. Yes, Montreal. Yes, we. Oui. Yes. Good evening, Montreal. Welcome to the decline of the American Empire. Oh, okay. Something I gather from that reaction you've been waiting quite a long time for. <laughs> for America, let's admit it, the numbers don't look good. Over 9% unemployment, $14.3 trillion in debt. But you know what? Those are just facts. <laughs> and at its best, America has never been about facts. It's been about belief. It's about looking at a fact and saying, no. <laughs> no, no. I don't think so. Let's try something a little better than that. My favourite moments in life are the half-time speeches during American sports movies, where a team is about to get completely massacred by the opposition. In walks the coach, music swelling behind him, and he delivers a speech which lifts their hearts and gets them to achieve the impossible. You've seen these speeches. Al Pacino in Any Given Sunday. Denzel Washington in That Other One. <laughs> what America needs is at the next State of the Union, a president to walk into Congress with a sports drink in his hand, throw it against the wall and say, what was that? <laughs> what just happened out there? Are you kidding me? Michigan, you call that productivity? Listen, if you want to just coast through life, go and live in Canada. At least you'll get free health care for doing nothing. <laughs> hey, Wisconsin! Stop phoning it and join the fourth financial quarter. You're LeBroning it out there. Stop LeBroning it. And Utah, what do you even do? <laughs> you don't think the Dominican Republic want your place on the flag? Earn that star. <laughs> All right, everyone, take a knee, take a knee. Now, I know it looks bad out there, and there are people watching us that think we're done. I don't know. Maybe they're right. Maybe we just hand the number one spot to China. Maybe we do that. Or maybe we make them take it from us. Take it from us with their tiny hands. Because this planet is our house. It's our house. So let's get out there and show everyone why we stole this land from the Native Americans. Let's do this. Is it over for America? I don't know. What's the evidence? I can tell you one story that I think is illustrative of something. I was in Boise, Idaho recently for the first and, God willing, final time. <laughs> and I saw something I will never forget. At the center of Boise, right on Main Street, there is this huge gray building. And on the front of the building is just one word written in golden letters. And that word is library and then there's an exclamation mark <laughs> and i stood in front of that building for what felt like hours trying to figure out what that exclamation mark was really trying to say was it i know i can't believe boise has got a library either <laughs> but i think we have to learn to live with it now they might be right. America doesn't need libraries. America doesn't need books. There are plenty of books in the world and plenty of people who've read them. <laughs> they should stick to what they're truly great at, TV. Have you got any idea just how good the TV show Wipeout is? <laughs> Wipeout is so good, America has finished television. When you watch Wipeout, you get that calm sensation wash over you, as, the, as if you're watching a country doing exactly what it should be doing at this moment in its history. Because watching Wipeout is like watching the last days of ancient Rome. Oh, it's spectacular, and it looks like fun, but deep down, I think everyone knows it can't last forever. <laughs> and most countries would have stopped there having finished something. But I guess there's that special quality in Americans 
that pioneering spirit which throughout years has pushed them that extra mile to achieve the incredible. So instead of stopping with wipeouts, instead of doing that, they created a program called Downfall. Downfall was a game show. The difference, though, was that in Downfall, if anyone failed to win a particular prize, that prize was pushed from the roof of a 10-story building. <laughs> Prizes like grand pianos, jet skis. It was taken off the air by ABC in America after just six weeks, presumably because it was simply too good. <laughs> but think about what we lost that day. Because that was the biggest imaginable message to terrorists we could possibly issue. <laughs> when you push a jet ski, a jet ski from a 10-story building, what you're essentially saying to them is, there is nothing you can do to us that we are not already doing to ourselves. <laughs> Pass me another jet ski. These people don't frighten me, I frighten me. <laughs> Americans are heroes, all of them. And I'll tell you why Americans are heroes. They don't waste time overthinking things. <laughs> Do you honestly think any other country could have put a man on the moon? Of course not. That is a stupid thing to do. <laughs> Only America could pull that off. Because only America would send his friend up a few years later with a set of golf clubs so they could whack a few balls around up there. It makes complete sense if you don't really think about it. <laughs> Most Guinness World Records are held by Americans. There's a very good reason for this, and that is that most Guinness World Records are ridiculous, <laughs> and they are good at that. <laughs> only three human beings, for instance, have ever jogged across the Sahara Desert. Where were they from? Do you really need me to tell you that? <laughs> or in your hearts, do you not already know? Three Americans jogging across one of the least hospitable places on Earth. iPods dangling out of their ears, hurdling over refugees. <laughs> and who did it? USA, baby, that's who. Woo! There's another one. They're everywhere. I wanted to see if this theory stood up. So I bought a Guinness Book of Records, <laughs> which I in no way knew they still made. <laughs> and I pulled out three records at random to see who had dominated each field. Record number one was this. <laughs> Most live rattlesnakes <laughs> held in the mouth. <laughs> Ooh. Huh. 10 is the answer <laughs> to that unexpected question. <laughs> Who did that? Jack Bibby. When? 2006. What country is he from? I'll give you a clue. <laughs> it's got two syllables and it starts with M. That's right, Merka. <laughs> Merka did it. Record number two, oldest male stripper. Oh. <laughs> Cherish the final few moments you have of not knowing the answer to this. <laughs> He's 76. His name, Bernie Barker. Where's he from? This will not surprise you, Miami, Florida. <laughs> that is supply and demand. That is capitalism at its best and worst. <laughs> Record number three, the Super Bowl. Largest gathering of people dressed as gorillas. <laughs> Let me just give you the number first, because it's instantly overwhelming. 637. <laughs> Think about that for a second. At that point, you are either importing gorilla costumes or making them on site, because no one world city has 637 gorilla costumes on the off chance that people will mobilize and require them at exactly the same time. <laughs> Think about the logistics involved. 
When did this happen? 1999. Where did it happen? London, England. We did that! We did that! We did that! No one dresses up as gorillas better than us! Nobody! Nobody! Please, Canada, do not break that record. It is literally all my people has left. <laughs> <laughs>